Happy Valentine's Month, everybody. I'm the Sluggers Review, and I'm here today to share with you some of my favorite Valentine's Day episodes from TV shows or even movies. Um, not everything is all lovey-dovey. Sometimes Valentine's Days deal with heartache and everything. So some episodes will be romantic and lovey-dovey, while others will be very like sad and heart-wrenching and stuff but love is love it doesn't always come with like you know smiles and giggles and glee you know so i'm here today to talk to you about batman the animated series season one mad as a hatter so this is the introduction of the mad hatter jarvis um tetch and you know this is probably one of the most twisted, like, love stories in Batman the Animated Series. It deals with that of a true stalker. A man who is literally off his rocker. And so, like, because it's bad enough, not only is he obsessed with the whole Alice in Wonderland story thing, but he's obsessed with a woman. See, in this episode, Jarvis... Tetch is just a lonely um, technician uh, who works at Wayne Tech. And he learned the ability to try to like enhance the um, brain by some form of manipulation. So he's testing it out on rats and everything. And so far it's successful, but he hasn't tested it out on living humans yet. And so <clears throat> the thing about him is that he's not the most attractive man um they drew him in this series very tall slightly like stout and like his really huge like teeth and one thing they never really show in the animated series is like the lines in people's teeth but they made sure to show the lines of his teeth to show that how huge his teeth is and when they did the new adventures they for some reason shrunk him <laughs> no explanation how this man went from being like five eight five nine to like five foot <laughs> or, or or like four foot eight or something like that they never explained that which is always so weird like i think that's part of one reason like why batman the new adventures um only lasted for one season well, that and Pokemon, but it's because like a lot of the characters change and they never explain how or why, like Killer Croc now being green or the Joker face looking the way it does, you know, like they just never explained it and stuff. So that and Pokemon just kind of like did it in, you know, but anyways, um, also the storytelling in the new adventures, they were darker. But they didn't have that noir feel that this series has. And so one day when Wayne is like, you know, observing everything that's going on, he's talking to Jervis. And Jervis is very nervous. He's shy. He doesn't really like talking to many people. His boss is always getting on his butt on everything because he's like, you know, isn't like showing progress. But he is. He just hasn't shown it to nobody yet. And so like... He's, he has a crush on a woman named Alice in this episode. And she looks just like Alice from Alice in the Wonderland. And so, but she has a boyfriend named Billy. And, you know, I have to say, the voice casting in this is amazing. Like, this is real voices that you hear. Not just one person doing, like, a hundred different voices. This is just, like, one person with a very authentic um, unique quality to their voice in both Alice and that of um, the Mad Hatter. And that's what I used to love about Andrea when she um, would cast people. Like she said, she'll get like real like talented people and stuff from like movies and TV shows. Nowadays, all you get is like nothing against voice actors because they do a great job. But it, it's just something like you can always tell sometimes when it's that fake voice, you know. And no matter how good it is, you can always tell there's something off-putting about it, you know? And so that's why I used to always love watching these cartoon series back in the 90s. Because you used to get, like, real voice folks. Uh, real, real acting people and stuff. And so, like... 
she is like all lovey dovey with her boyfriend, but then all of a sudden they break up. And when they break up, he's ecstatic. He's all like, he he always quoting things from like Alice in Wonderland, poetry, stuff like that, um, Shakespeare type um, stuff. And so he's thrilled. He thinks this is his time to finally make his move. But then he realizes he's not the most attractive man. Who's going to like, like him? But then um, he thinks to himself as he's looking at the portrait of like the Alice in Wonderland thing, he just thinks to himself, hmm, maybe, just maybe I can use this to my advantage. And he does. He even starts dressing now as the Mad Hatter and it gives him new confidence. And now with his newly refined uh, mind controlling technology in the shape of uh, playing cards from Alice in the Wonderland, he now makes his move and he asks her out on a date. And she accepts even with the way he's dressed. <laughs> So we see on their date, they do plenty of things. They do like a carriage ride. And when they do, we see that I think he he's now using his mind control to control people to get like what he wants to do his date uh, or to go on his date because he doesn't have that much money. Uh, and so like because of that, he's getting free everything, right? And when he's in like the park, some thugs see him and think that's easy money so they go to try like and rough him up but then he takes out two cars and places it um on their heads and stuff which now controls them he tells them jump off the river uh or go jump in the river so they're gonna like climb on top of the bridge and they're gonna jump in the river this catches the attention of batman and it's a funny exchange between him and alfred so batman's in the batmobile and alfred's talking about like um, maybe this will be an early night for you. You can catch some dinner. And then the police alarm rings. And then so Batman's all like, nope, I'm on call. And Alfred's all like, ah, oh, I'll pack your usual breakfast, toast, coffee, and bandages. <laughs> oh, I love Alfred's wit. <laughs> so when Batman shows up on the bridge, he doesn't know what's really going on. He thinks it's just a suicide. So he tells them, you know, just calm down and come with him. But then they're like, no, Mr. Hat told us to jump into the river. So then they start like struggling with him and they start to overpower him. Well, at some point in time, their mind control devices come off their heads and they have no idea how they even got there. And so during this time, while all this is going on, Jarvis is now still on his date. He is like at a restaurant his meal is caught because he's like brainwashed people and all this other stuff and then he sends alice back to her home and she talking about how she had a wonderful time and he's happy and thrilled he's in love you know he is literally obsessed with this woman but when she gets back billy is there with flowers and like he proposes to her so the next day she's thrilled um telling everybody at work how like she's so happy and all this other stuff and here comes jarvis jarvis has no idea when he comes into work he's all happy and smiles with flowers and then he meets alice who tells him of her good news which is his bad news he squeezes the roses in his hands and we actually get to see blood come out from a kid's cartoon and so he's furious and he realizes he has the power and he's going to have the control. So during this time, Batman is in the cave trying to figure out what the world is like device is. And Alfred's all like, I remember that from uh, my childhood. And he shows him a picture of Alice in Wonderland. So that makes Batman start thinking. He's all like, hold up. Um, he saw that same picture in this man's office that works for him. So he just puts two and two together and assumes it's him. Now, it could have been anybody, but you know, <laughs> it's a cartoon. Like 20 minutes, you gotta hurry up. So he goes as Bruce Wayne wanting to like see Jarvis. This pisses off his boss and she's like, I don't know what you did, but you pissed off the boss. So at this point, Jarvis is like, screw everything and screw everybody. So he puts like a mind control on the boss. And then he leaves with her. So when Bruce shows up at his place, he asks like Alice, you know, um, where's Jarvis? And he's like, he walks off with the boss. Then she gets a phone call from Billy who breaks up with her. She's in tears and everything. 
And so at some point in time when Alice goes to her place, she sees tons of flowers um, at her home and she sees Jarvis like sneaking around and like he tells her, oh, I'm so sorry, Billy broke up with you. And she's all like, I haven't told nobody yet. So she knows something's up. So then at this point, he's just like, screw it and everything. I'm going to like kidnap you and everything. But then Batman's hiding in the shadows. So like after like he calls on some thugs, the Warriors and the Carpenter from Alice in the Wonderland. It's brainwashed, mind control people. And so at some point in time as Batman's trying to fight him, he really is having a hard time and everything. And so he makes it off with Alice by putting her on a mind control. He's at this point where he's willing to do anything he can to have her, even have her brainwashed and everything. So, and that's kind of like, what kind of love is that when you have somebody completely brainwashed to your every whim? Like this just shows how psychotic this man is. And so after he makes his way out, Batman has no idea where he's at, but then he takes one of those little playing card things and he sees where the company it comes from. It's this type of like storybook island that's um, in Gotham and it's decorated just like Alice in Wonderland. And so he goes there and Jarvis is waiting for him. And all the people that he brainwashed are now like his puppets and they fight Batman. So, but their strength is increased. So as strong as they are, he frees the Billy person. And so Billy helps free the other people. He chases around like the place of the mom um, with the Mad Hatter. And then at some point in time, he is finally able to like um, defeat the Mad Hatter and he frees Alice. And as he's defeated, he just like cries and everything. Uh, and he starts quoting a passage from like the Alice in Wonderland book. And Alice is just looking at him like all sad. This man is truly psychotic and everything. This, like he was in the Adam West um, Batman show. That's the only time he's ever been in live action. Now he has been in like um, other like animated movies and stuff. And oh wait, he was also in animation. I'm uh, not animation, but live action. And Batwoman season three in the first episode. And that was a pretty cool one. Like I wish they would bring him into the movies. Like could you imagine having a person like him who's so psychotic and twisted, a very grounded carrier who just brainwashes people and kidnaps like women and stuff like that and Batman has to like stop him that would be such a great villain because I'm so tired of always seeing the Joker or Two-Face or the Penguin and Catwoman they keep reusing these characters in live action movies to death to the point where I am so tired of seeing them we've had three no four Catwomen in live action movies and tons of them in like TV shows we have had, geez, how many jokers have we had? One, two, three, four, four jokers and stuff. Two penguins, um, two two faces, two banes. Um, and it's just like, it's insane. Like bring some other people in the fold, you know what I'm saying? And so this would be so cool just to bring somebody who's like twisted and everything. And he can't defeat Batman on a physical level, but he could brainwash him or something like that. Now, wasn't that romantic or depressing, depending on what kind of video I just talked about? <laughs> okay, well, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Bye.